Hey, OBSers, we're in week four of our Pointing to the Promise online Bible study. How are you doing so far? Are you caught up with us or are you a little behind? Either way, we know it's a busy season, so do what you can and come back when you have time. Remember, our goal is to focus on Jesus, even if it's for a few minutes. Before long, we'll be focusing on Him without even thinking about it. It will be part of our everyday life because we built this habit together. This week, we're focusing on the word hope. All we have to do is read the news or turn on the television to see how our world today needs hope. Kayla, what would you say to the woman who's struggling with seeing the light at the end of the tunnel? How can we live with the hope of Christ amidst our Christmas season? Hi friends. You know, I know this past year has brought a lot of mess. Um, we've had pandemics and wars and natural disasters. Maybe you've lost someone you love or maybe there's been family tensions over politics and policies. And after a year like that, I can understand if your hope is feeling a little thin right now. But can I also tell you that you are not alone in feeling that life is messy. And our example is right here in this Christmas story. See, we have to be careful not to romanticize the Christmas story and strip the humanity out of it. This is a messy story. Um, a woman nine months pregnant is either walking or riding a donkey for 90 miles in what archaeologists say would have been a, quote, grueling trip. And then they get there and there's no place to stay. I mean, really, God, this woman's about to give birth to your son. But there's no room for them, no bed for the Son of God to lay in. And then after that baby was born, the first people to visit were smelly shepherds straight from the fields. So from the outside, nothing went right in this birth story. But it is out of this mess that the greatest hope for all of humanity was born. You know, it reminds me a little bit about making gingerbread with my kids. Um, everyone is so excited when we start, because we start with butter and sugar, always a good place to start. And then we add molasses. My kids hate molasses. Like they cannot stand the way it smells. So now they're like, what, yuck. And then to make it worse, we added a little bit of vinegar too. And at this point, I mean, they are done. They want nothing to do with gingerbread anymore. It must be disgusting. And I keep telling them, you know, just trust me. Like, I know it doesn't look good or smell good or even taste good right now but just wait, I know what I'm doing. And then after we get all those spices and flour mixed in, we put it through the fire and something happens. Those ingredients, good and bad, combine together to form this delicious, soft, amazing gingerbread that we all love. And the same is true for us. You know, you might not like the ingredients going into your life right now. Like, I get it. I also know that God knows what he's doing and he has the power and the goodness to use all things and make them into something good. And there's your hope. Our hope lies in knowing that no matter how messy it looks like right now, God is on the throne. He is not shaken. He is not thrown off. He is doing a work in your life right now. I promise. He can use all things and create something good and sweet if you let him. So our moment of reflection this week is to look for the hope beyond the mess. As we walk through December, I know there are a lot of preparations to be made and it's messy. Baking cookies, messy. Wrapping gifts, messy, right? Planning a party, pulling out Christmas decorations, Christmas tree pine needles. There is a lot of mess at Christmas. And when you see a mess this week, I just want you to take a moment and remind yourself of the hope beyond it. You know, messy kitchens mean full hearts and tummies. Messy wrapping paper means thoughtful gifts that show our love and appreciation. Messy houses just might mean you're busy making memories. Remember, Jesus came from a 
messy looking situation. And there is no greater hope than that. So go find a mess and remember there's always hope. Kayla, I love how your message flipped the switch on how I can choose to look at these things, not as tasks and chores, but as moments that show my love and care for my family and how my doing them creates a perspective where I can truly see, feel, and experience both the fun and the beauty of Christmas. And your gingerbread cookies made me hungry. As a sweet treat for you, friends, we have Kayla's gingerbread recipe linked for you in today's newsletter. All right, it's time to get to week four. And don't forget, maybe even say it with me wherever you're sitting. When we know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Have a great week.